Hello friends, this is Scott, back at my home office. Uh, welcome back to my channel, Growing Contentments on YouTube. This is a gardening channel where I'm trying to live my best rural life while living in the city. And so I'm trying to take on as many uh, agricultural or rural type pursuits as I can, but still live within the city limits. There's a lot of planting, a lot of weeding, and a lot of things going on in, the, in my own home garden as well as the two project gardens. I kind of went out today looking around and took some pictures for Instagram and I'm just kind of like not really into it today. I've got a video to do, which is the one I'm going to do on this one, which kind of is how I deal with burnout and how I get over that feeling of, of just kind of like tired and lazy and just unmotivated. What I do is I pick one job and I do it. Okay, I, from start to finish, I finish something. Okay. I drive around neighborhoods all the time and I see, you know, we all do. We see those yards that just don't measure up to the rest of the neighborhood. People of whatever their circumstances are, whether they're not gardeners, whether they have health problems, whether it's a rental situation, you know, people just don't take care of their yards these days. Um, and even those, those of us that want to brag that we take care of our yards, my yard's not very good looking right now, especially the front yard. So I've got to do my own sprucing up and, and, uh, and, and take care of business. Uh, it's not the worst, but it could definitely be a lot better. But when I'm feeling these, kind of seeing so many projects to do, and it's hot, and I feel unmotivated, I just pick one, and I do it. And that's what I did recently over at Project Garden Number 2. You know, we've been working on that house, front yard and backyard. we still got a lot to do. But it got to a point where it's, it's the homeowner got overwhelmed over numerous years of, of you know, being in the military, being gone, the yard getting away. Um, but even just doing one job and doing it well, making it look nicer, it's amazing how that lifts your spirits and it's amazing how that gets you motivated for the next project. And it's funny, I'll be lazy and unmotivated, I'll start doing something and then pretty soon I've done three or four different projects. So today, starting out, you know, I took care of the chickens and walked to the yard and took some pictures. Um, now I'm going to edit this video and it's all about, uh, you know, just how to landscape your yard so you can perk it up without a lot of cost but a, quite a bit of work but for under five hundred dollars you can make most of your yard look pretty pretty nice especially when you do it in bark mulch again i'm all back to eden i'm all about covering the soil and uh, controlling weeds retaining moisture and adding fertility to the soil through mulch and so at my project garden number two is i did one half of his yard uh, in, in bark mulch and even doing that it's amazing how much better the yard looks with just that. So, so that's going to be my message for today is if you're feeling overwhelmed and you're feeling in despair, go take on one thing. Don't bounce around. Get one thing done, one thing done well, and it's amazing how that will pick you up and get you motivated to do other projects. Because when you try to do a little bit here, a little bit there, and you don't see any progress, it just gets depressing. And, and next thing you know, it's fall, and it's time to start ripping out things in the garden, and you've missed the, you know, the best parts of the gardening season. Um, but it is hot, it is a lot of work, and uh, it's hard to stay motivated when you've been busy all, all spring. But uh, I'm going to show you now what the first, how it all started, what it looked like before, and what it looks like now. Again, a lot more work to do. We're not anywhere near done, but it's, we've got a good start on it. And now they can start enjoying their yard, take a little stress off, and uh, it looks much, much better. So let's get into it. Now, I didn't take any initial videos of the full mess, um, but here's a bunch of tree pruning that I did when I pruned these trees back. But this was uh, probably five weeks ago. Uh, the lilacs were still in bloom. As you can see, I've been through and I've just been digging out weeds. Uh, you see the buckets of weeds there. And you see where I'm, I was and where I needed to still go. And you see this is, this is how the whole yard was on, in the flower beds. Just lots of grass, lots of ground cover. But again, when you have ground cover, uh, the soil is healthy underneath. Uh, Mother Nature covers the soil. It doesn't leave, you know, blank soil. Humans do, and that's where we run into our problems. But Mother Nature, if, it, if it's all possible, will always put something down on the ground to cover itself. But we've got some sun-baked dirt here. We've got weeds, you know, sporadically throughout. A lot of weeds along the fence lines. Grass that's grown up in. Uh, just kind of a mess. Here I started to dig from the other side, and again, you just can't pull these weeds. You gotta take a shovel, you gotta dig the roots, you gotta pull them out, shake the dirt, and try to get as many as you possibly can. You won't get everything, and by turning up the dirt, you're gonna bring new weed seeds to the surface. 
but you got to dig down. You just can't pull them and, you know, especially with dry dirt and expect to do anything. Uh, you got to get the roots. And even when you get most of the roots, a lot of these weeds will sprout from any roots remaining. So that's where the mulch comes in. A good, you know, five, six inches of mulch will, you know, suppress the weeds. And uh, you'll have to fight some when you're first starting. But after that, any weeds that are new weeds that come up in mulch, you can pull out easily because they're not established in the ground. Again, this weeding project took me multiple days, probably about six hours of weeding total, I would think, six to eight hours. I didn't really keep track of time. I just would do as much as I could in a day, and then just uh, next day when I got over there, uh, just keep on swimming. But I did get all the way to the end and uh, was ready to uh, add the mulch, which makes everything look a little bit better. Now, the first look of the bark that I put in, um, after I'd weeded so far, I went ahead and got a truckload. I got uh, three truckloads of bark here, uh, which is two cubic yards per truckload, so six cubic yards. Um, again, it's $117 for every two cubic yards, so you can do the math. Um, the edging uh, does cost some money. I put in some edging that I got it, just generic uh, inch, inch and a half edging, just to hold the bark back from getting in the grass. You know, that's not cheap, but it's not the most expensive stuff. So I spent $500 to $600, or we did, on this part of the project. But here you can see what it looks like and then where I still have to go. And you'll see it does look so much better uh, when you see the contrast of what's been done versus what still needs to be done. Uh, you can see how much better that looks, uh, even just putting bark, bark down. Now here's the last day. Uh, this is when I had finished putting all the bark. This is the third truckload. So I scan back around. As you can see, it's, uh, it's looking much, much better. Now again, I always mention, do not mix bark into soil. It will bind up all your nitrogen trying to break down the carbon material. So when you want to plant, pull the bark back, dig your hole in the dirt, put your compost or whatever additives you want, plant your plant, cover it back up with soil, and then pull the bark mulch back. That way, it, uh, as, the, as, a, as a mulch. We're doing a, a lasagna style. Uh, where we're just layering upon layer, we're not at, we're not going to mix this material into the soil. This is not uh, that would be the worst thing you can do for your garden. But as you see, I pruned these trees up. There's still a little more pruning to do, but you got to get stuff up off the ground so that there gets a little sunlight to the ground. But just even doing a little bit of of pruning and adding the bark mulch, and it looks looks so much better. Still a lot more to do though. Now here's a quick look back at the garden in the front yard where we used a black uh, mulch instead of the, uh, the red cedar mulch. They wanted a contrast in the front and I think it's look, it looks very nice with the dark mulch in the front yard. I do the same concept in my house where I have dark in the front and then I have uh, just natural bark in the back. But it does spruce it up with just a little bit of effort and uh, a little bit of bark and it, uh, it makes it look much nicer. I hope you liked today's video. I hope you can get re-energized in the garden as I need to because I've got lots going on. I have a rental house that uh, their tenants are moving out and the yard over there I hear is a disaster. I have not been over there so I will have a project garden number three which is going to be my own uh, disaster that I've got to take care of. Uh, re-landscaping and because and, uh, tenants don't always take care of the place the way you want it to be taken care of so we get it back in a couple days and then I'll be over there taking care of that but a couple to end this video I just wanted to talk about a couple things that have been bothering me a little bit lately a lot lately is the other day you know I have a 16 year old 16 year olds out driving with three of his friends he's not driving kid takes a corner too fast going about 50 miles an hour up over the curb misses a power pole by inches and it breaks a fence and, and uh, my son has a cut on his chin but otherwise nobody else received any injuries I don't believe but they're so close to that power pole if they would hit that power pole this would be a totally different situation you know we, we avoided that disaster you know it's a learning lesson and then two days later uh, I get the sad news of one of my son's friends that uh, was played football with him two years ago and was a Juan Diego High School student, but he ended up transferring away last year. He was killed in a car wreck. 16-year-old uh, driver, early morning, uh, crosses a median, hits somebody head on, and, and dies. Um, a couple years ago, we had friends that had a, they brought a girl up camping with them. It was a Hillcrest High School student. 
And uh, like I say, we were just camping with her, and then two weeks later, she's early in the morning, she's driving to drill team practice after being out all night, it appears, and tired. And who knows what happened, but she ends up crossing the median and hitting a car head on. And, you know, after a couple of weeks on life support, she, she passed away. So, so I guess my moral of the story is um, you really need to talk to your young drivers. Um, do not let kids, especially that age, stay out all night and then be out driving early in the morning. Um, that's two incidences, you know, that we've had personally. Uh, my son's wasn't. It was, you know, a normal, you know, afternoon, evening. But, you know, these two fatalities happen in the early morning hours when kids are out not getting their rest and then they're driving probably back from a party or from somebody's house. Uh, parents, really, you know, go get your kids. You know, if they sleep over, don't let them come home early, early. You know, or go get them because it's just, you know, they're tired and, and they're not, you know, regulating their sleep. And all it takes is a, a moment of distraction or falling asleep or cell phone or something. And uh, we end up with another tragedy. And it breaks my heart when I see these young people that, uh, you know, they have their whole life ahead of them. And they're never going to, they're never going to be able to experience those things. And that, you know, that could have been my son. So early morning is a terrible time for kids to be out driving when they've been out all night. So kind of keep that in mind. You know, kids are scary enough anyway, but at early morning hours when they're tired and fatigued from out screwing around is a, is, is a time that they shouldn't uh, be driving or get behind the wheel. Fatigue driving is probably as bad as anything at this point. So anyway, enough negativity on that. Uh, we move on. We live our lives and we hope for better for our kids and for their friends and for everybody. So. If you like this kind of content and would like to continue to follow me on my journey in living my best rural life in the city, please help me out, subscribe to my channel, tell other people about me, comment, because I'd love to hear from you, and share. And uh, again, I'm trying to build a channel, trying to you know, show you all kinds of things that you can do in the city to, to live your rural dream. So anyway, I appreciate your support and your time, and, and I'll be safe out there.